Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Linux channel, Byte Linux. So in this video, I'm going to be installing Manjaro Linux version 17, it's codenamed Jellovara, and I'm going to be installing it with the XFCE desktop environment. So the Manjaro's homepage is manjaro.org, and I'm actually going to quickly jump over to DistroWatch, just to see its ranking. Now, of course, this is not a reliable source of this information, but it does give you a feel. So currently, as of April 1st, 2017, Manjaro is ranked third and it is growing. So if I click on that, we have some information here. So it is a distribution based off of Arch Linux. It is originated from Germany with some parts developed in Austria and France. It does support both 32-bit and 64-bit systems. Now there are a large variety of desktop environments to choose from. I'll go into detail about those later. And if you put it on the USB, you can actually use it as a live user without actually installing it onto a into your computer. And finally, the release model is a rolling release, so you will be constantly getting updates and new features. So going back over to the home page, we have some basic information here. The second tab is the news tab, and it gives you some articles and paragraphs about the latest updates to Manjaro. Now the third tab is very important. This is the community tab, and here you have forum and wiki. So the forum is available in lots of different languages, and if you ask a question on this forum, you will definitely get it answered. I mean, this is why Manjaro is one of the best Arch Linux distributions out there, or any distribution is because it has a great community, they are very welcoming to any question whether you are a beginner or an advanced user. And you also have the wiki, if you want to get some information from Manjaro itself. Now the fourth tab is the download tab. So talking about desktop environments, you have XFCE and KDE as their flagship versions you could say, and then they also just recently added the GNOME edition. I'm not sure if this is like a flagship, but it is featured on this page right here, so it is probably one of those. Now on top of these, you also have community releases, and these include Cinnamon, i3, and LXQT desktop environments, and also you have Manjaro Deepin, a very beautiful desktop environment, and you also have Manjaro Budgie. And that is the default desktop environment for Solus OS. So in total, you actually have eight different desktop environments to choose from. That's that's pretty nice. So going back over to the downloads page, you have your 64-bit downloads, direct download, 32-bit, and torrent downloads for both of these two systems. And you also have these in all of the flagship versions. So I'm going to click on 64-bit direct download, because that's my system. And it is hosted on SourceForge, so it'll just take a while here, and in a second we'll see how big the file is. So Manjaro XFCE is 1.4 gigabytes, that's pretty normal, and the KDE version is 2 gigabytes. So once it's done downloading, I will put it onto USB and resume when that's booted up. So when you're booting it off your USB, you will see this and you want to select Start Manjaro Linux, and that will bring you to the live Manjaro environment. Okay everyone, so Manjaro has actually booted up now, and you should see something like this. This is kind of like the start screen, you can launch all of these different links here, but we want to click Launch Installer. Now before you click this, make sure you're connected to the internet. So I'm already connected, but make sure you have connected either to Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection. And once you have that, click Launch Installer. Okay, so here it is. So I'm going to close out of this, but so let's start. So first here you can select your language. For the installer, click Next. Select your time zone. Make sure everything looks good here. 
and here you can select your keyboard layout. Now it should look something like this, so whichever one you select it should look like this. And it's kind of nice, it gives you a preview of your keyboard. And you have your different variations on this side, and of course you can test it down below. Okay, now here is the partitioning part of the installer. So, I have nothing on my computer right now, so you can just select erase disk. Now, if you want to manually partition it, you can select manual partitioning over here. And then, manually partitioning, creating swap, root, stuff like that. But, I'm just going to select this. Now, if you actually have an operating system installed on it currently, and you want to dual boot, you will also have that option here. And that's very convenient compared to other Arch Linux distributions. And of course, select your bootloader location. Make sure just to select your hard disk. And if you want to encrypt it, you can select that. So I'm gonna hit next. And here's when it set up your profile. So I'm just gonna use Bio Linux. And then name your PC. Make a password. Make sure it's strong. It should match. And I recommend selecting use the same password for the administrator account, but if you have multiple users on this Manjaro computer, don't select this and create another administrator password. So I'm, I only have one user on this, so I'm just gonna use this one. And this is kind of like a recap of everything that's gonna happen. Make sure everything looks good. Click next, and it should start installing. Okay everyone, Manjaro just finished installing, and you should see this message right here, all done. Now I'm going to restart now, and quit, but if you want to, you can continue testing the live system. And now, after this, I'm going to begin the review part of the video. Great everyone, so here it is, Manjaro has actually booted up from the hard disk. And just like the installation, you get this on start, but you could just disable this, and it will no longer launch that. So the first thing I'm going to be taking a look at is the pre-installed applications. Now, also right off the bat, this is the whisker menu to access your applications, and which is a very good addition here. So, starting with accessories, you have bulk rename, catfish file search, clipman, and Grandpa Archive Manager, Calculator, HP Device Manager, Light DM, Mouse Pad for Text Editor, Notes, Orange Global Time for the clock right here, Screenshot, Sensor Viewer, and Thunar for your File Manager, and XF Burn. And it does come pre installed with the full LibreOffice suite. For gaming, you have Steam pre installed. Under Graphics, you have GIMP and View nor view in yar. Then the default web browser is Firefox, and for messaging you have HexChat and Pigeon Internet Messenger. Now your default mail client is actually Thunderbird. So for your music player you have Guaya Deck, Pro Media Player, and Pulse Audio for all your volume control. So you can see I have a lot of settings here to mess around with. Now for the PDF viewing, you have QPDF view, and you have a dictionary. So some other stuff that's installed, you have Adobe Flash Player, all your Bluetooth adapters and a manager, a firewall configuration, and some other things that are pretty um, normal on XFCE system. And of course, you have HTOP and Terminal for reviewing and managing your system, um, Software Update, Sensor Viewer, and Gparted for managing your disks. So now I'm going to be looking at um, the Package Manager on Manjaro. So as with all Arch Linux systems, the default Package Manager is Pacman, which you can see if you go on the terminal, you can use Pacman pseudo pacman for installing things but if you want a graphical front end you actually have pamac and that is under the name add remove software here so now one thing to note about manjaro 
is the re and one the reasons why it's so stable is because they actually have their own software repository. So basically, in the Arch user repository, when an update comes out, the Manjaro team looks at it, analyzes it, and makes sure that it works on their system. So there is a delay between when it's released on the AUR and when it actually comes out in the Manjaro repos, but that's kind of a good thing because it's very stable. Now luckily, there is an option to enable the AUR support. So if you click on the three lines here and click Preferences, enter your password, this is pretty important stuff here, and click on AUR, it's the third tab, you can select Enable AUR Support. And as you can see over here, AUR popped up right here. And you can also allow to check for updates, I usually do that. And you have some other settings also here. So now you have all the Manjaro repositories, so if you can, install things from here. But also, it's very nice, you have AUR. So now let's take a look at some of the appearance settings and wallpapers and such on Manjaro. So if you go into your settings here, so you just go to settings manager and click appearance, you have your GTK theme. So by default, it is Vertex Maya, which is actually not a bad choice. It's very nice. Kind of reminds me of KDE. And you, you have a lot of variety of different ones. So you have Raleigh High Contrast Breath and Default Arita and also some other XFCE ones. So you have the dark version right here. Let's see the light version for now. On icons, you have the Vertex Maya theme. Had kind of like a green feel to it. And you also have Adwita, Gnome, and High Contrast. Under fonts, it uses Cantorel by default. And actually, I found out that if you set this to slight, the fonts actually look much better and set this to RGB. In my opinion, it just looks better, fonts render better. I don't know why, it just does. Let's turn that up a little bit. And you get some other settings here. So if you click on desktop, you actually have your wallpaper here. Let's look at some of them pre-installed here. So we have this one, which is what you see right now. And then you have some other Manjaro ones, it's pretty cool. Now, kind of surprised there aren't too many here. You, you only have the Manjaro ones, not some of the other XFCE ones. But that's fine. You can always download some later. Let me use that one. Or, and of course, you can select whichever one you want here. And you have some other ones here, notifications. It also uses the default theme here. You have some other ones there. Um, for the window manager, I use the default XFWM, XFC window manager, and you can set all the things here. Put that there, and some advanced settings. Under tweaks, it uses the default XFC compositor, and you actually have a pretty good range of some settings here. Okay, so let's look at the mouse now. So if you go under mouse and touchpad, and click on theme, you can see that the default is Breeze, which is kind of like the KDE one, you can see here. Now, one thing I found is that it does not, by default, support cursor size scaling. Kind of a bummer, but the other ones do, like these. So now, you might be wondering, now what is the lock screen like? So if I log out of this by clicking that down here, hit log out, you'll see that you also have this wallpaper here, and it actually uses light DM for its lock screen login prompt. And you can manage those settings if you go hit light DM GTK greater settings. And it'll open up in a second here. So here it is. You can, of course, set the themes for this too. Font. Now, one thing I did find when testing is that if you want to use custom wallpaper, you have to, have to make sure that it is in user share backgrounds. Like, if you put it in something else, like home pictures or something like that, then it will not work. It will just show a black screen. So make sure it's in user share backgrounds and select that and it will work okay everyone so before i go into looking at the performance i'm first going to show you how to update your manjaro system so what you can do is go in the bottom bar down here and click this icon right here it's a arrow with this kind of 
shape right there, that jagged shape. And if you click on that and you hover over it, you will see something. So it might say you have updates available or your system is up to date. So in my case, I updated it, but if you right click on it and click update manager, then it will synchronize the databases. And when that's done, it should either say systems up to date or you have updates available. So I'm up to date, but when you do have system updates, this icon will be green or red, something like that. It won't be gray. And then when it is up to date, it will be gray. So let's look at the performance. So we open up the task manager. So it's actually called task manager on XFCE systems rather than system monitor. We will see that it's currently running at 6%, but that doesn't really give us any information. So let's open up HTOP. And here you can see that it is running at 20, about 8% on my CPU. In memory, it's running 479 megabytes. Now that's pretty crazy. That's very light. And we have all the running applications here. So you have all these here. Go back to the task manager. You will see that the most resource intensive one is MSM Notifier. And then we have all these other ones. XFC for Clipman is actually the fourth one. And Clipman's actually this one down here. And that is your clipboard history. See, if you copy something, you can actually retrieve it up to a certain amount. That's that's pretty nice. So yeah, this is very lightweight. Now, of course, KDE will be a little bit different, probably like 600, 800 maybe, but still very light. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this video. So my two cents about Manjaro are that if you are looking to install Arch Linux on your computer and you're a beginner, definitely install Manjaro. It's very easy to install and it, everything comes preloaded. And also, you can see that you don't really have to, for a basic user, it c includes all the good applications. And I feel that it's not too bloated, but it's not too minimal either, so it's really good. And just overall, it's very stable. Um, I've encountered very little bugs. The package manager, Pac-Man, and Pamek work very well. And since it's XFCE, it's very customizable and lightweight. So, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome Linux videos. And thanks for watching.